The Second Battle of El Alamein was fought from October 23 until November 11, 1942 was a battle of the Second World War that took place near the Egyptian railway halt of El Alamein. In August 1942, General Claude Achenluck had been sacked as Commander-in-Chief Middle East Command and his successor, Lt. Gen. William Gutt was killed on his way to replace him as Commander of the Eighth Army. Lt. Gen. Bernard Montgomery was appointed and led the Eighth Army offensive. The Allied victory was the beginning of the end of the Western Desert Campaign, eliminating the Axis threat to Egypt, the Suez Canal and the Middle Eastern and Persian oil fields. The battle revived the morale of the Allies, being the first big success against the Axis since Operation Crusader in late 1941. The battle coincided with the Allied invasion of French North Africa in Operation Torch on November 8, the Battle of Stalingrad and the Guadalcanal Campaign. El Alamein was an Allied victory, although Rommel did not lose hope until the end of the Tunisia Campaign. Churchill said, It may almost be said, before Alamein we never had a victory. After Alamein we never had a defeat. The Allies frequently had numerical superiority in the Western Desert but never had it been so complete in quantity and quality. With the arrival of Sherman tanks, six-pounder anti-tank guns and Spitfires in the Western Desert, the Allies gained a comprehensive superiority. Montgomery envisioned the battle as an attrition operation, similar to those fought in the First World War and accurately predicted the length of the battle and the number of Allied casualties. Allied artillery was superbly handled and Allied air support was excellent, in contrast to the Luftwaffe and Regia Aeronautica, which offered little or no support to ground forces, preferring to engage in air-to-air -air combat. Air supremacy had a huge effect on the battle. Montgomery wrote, The moral effect of air action, on the enemy, is very great and out of all proportion to the material damage inflicted. In the reverse direction, the sight and sound of our own air forces operating against the enemy have an equally satisfactory effect on our own troops. A combination of the two has a profound influence on the most important single factor in war, morale. Historians debate the reasons Rommel decided to advance into Egypt. In 1997, Martin van Creveld wrote that Rommel had been advised by the German and Italian staffs that his army could not properly be supplied so far from the ports of Tripoli and Benghazi. Rommel pressed ahead with his advance to Alamein and as predicted, supply difficulties limited the attacking potential of the Axis forces. According to Maurice Remy in 2002, Hitler and Mussolini put pressure on Rommel to advance. Rommel had been very pessimistic especially after the first battle of El Alamein and knew that as U.S. supplies were en route to Africa and Axis ships were being sunk in the Mediterranean, the Axis was losing a race against time. On August 27, Kesselring promised Rommel that supplies would arrive in time but Westphal pointed out that such an expectation would be unrealistic and the offensive should not begin until they had arrived. After a conversation with Kesselring on 30 August, Rommel decided to attack. The Desert Fox, Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, arrives in Libya to assume command of the Africa Corps. Within a few months, Rommel, the rising star of the German army, recaptures the territory taken by the British Commonwealth forces prior to his arrival. Despite being heavily outnumbered by the British forces, the superior range and armor of the German tanks allows the Africa Corps to take the fight to the Allies. By July of 1942, the Desert Fox and his unstoppable Africa Corps, in a series of classic blitzkrieg attacks, pushes the British forces eastward across the deserts of Libya and into Egypt. Now in late 1942, holding their ground a mere 60 miles from the Egyptian capital of Cairo, British Field Marshal Montgomery's forces, including the Desert Rats of the 7th Armoured Division, prepare to blunt the German offensive and regain the initiative.
Diese maßnahmlose Flugzeuge noch vor Ewigkeit! Queen 6, this is King 6. Enemy tank sighted leaving the depot. We're commencing our attack. Out. This is it, boys. Our decoys should keep those panzers busy while we wipe out their supplies. Let's go!
bunker door open now! Yes, sir! Sir, Jerry tanks have been spotted advancing on our positions to the east. Looks like we're in for a bloody hard fight, lads. Get us back quickly, Private. Yes, sir. Davis, McGregor, get in the brand carrier. Move. We're finished here.
One. Two. Another. Split into groups of six per tank! Come on, boys! Let's go! Stay with the tanks! Paris, let's chase those crabs through this tunnel! We'll meet up with the tanks on the other side!
Broadsword to King 5. We have your target. Commencing attack. McGregor, nice fight. All right, listen up. We're finished here. Well done, boys. I'll drink to that, sir. 